everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm going to be doing my second styles challenge. So first I'm just going to draw a character of mine in my own style. And so um, I'm actually drawing a character from a secret project that I'll be telling you guys about more soon. Um, but yeah, she's basically sort of a round character, not unlike Planchette. And uh, basically I'm going to just try to do all these different styles that I've gathered up, some of which you've requested and some of which I just wanted to try out. So the main hallmarks of my style are the big expressive eyes, which I got a lot from Joan Vasquez in anime. Uh, I also use very um, differentiated line art, you know, like the thickness is, changes a lot and uh, that's mostly from western cartoons and I try to use shape when I am designing characters so for a friendly character like this most of these shapes are round. I also change the actual shape of the iris to match with the character's traits so this character is like a nurse kind of so I put the little medical symbol in her eyes and that is the actual shape of her eye. I know that's kind of weird but it's uh, one of those cartoony stylistic things that I've really enjoyed doing so I started doing it more and more and yeah. I also wanted to make it look a little bit like she has angel wings um, from the right angle with her braids. So that was another thing I sort of added with her. Uh, I use very simple cell shading. I literally just put a multiply layer above and use only one or two colors to shade and then I use a pure white for most of my shines. So the next style I'm going to do is Powerpuff Girls. Now Powerpuff Girls was one of the first cartoons I really fell in love with as a kid and I really love it to this day. Um, I just think it's a great show and it's a great style. So uh, Powerpuff Girls is a really round style and overall it's just extremely exaggerated more so than you even see usually in anime or anything like that. They're just like so round and so they have such huge heads and such huge eyes and it's just a really, um, it feels like they're not holding back, which I always thought was really cool. It's also super clean, and that's something I actually struggle with a lot. Um, I don't really have a stabilizer in Photoshop or anything. I know la Lazy Nezume is something you can install to make your lines better, but I just haven't. So my lines are not quite as clean as the ones you see in Powerpuff Girls. I actually think they might be using vectors um, for some of the animation and stuff in that. But anyhow, I did my best to sort of replicate it. It's interesting, everything is lined except for the color of the eyes. So yeah, the, the actual color of the eyes is for some reason the only thing that doesn't have a black line containing it. The next style I'm doing is from Danganronpa. This is sort of self-indulgent, I'm just really obsessed with Danganronpa right now. I played the first two games a little while back and I just finished watching the third anime the despair half of it and it was so sad um, I don't recommend it if you don't like sad stuff but it was really interesting uh, so this is an anime style but it's also for video games so it's a little bit different than you typically see for television animation um, so I'm just trying to keep in mind the things that set Danganronpa apart from other anime type styles the hair is one of the first things a lot of people notice with Danganronpa. They really seem to exaggerate, so I lifted her braids up. There's a lot of anti-gravity hair going on in Danganronpa, so I tried to follow that through. There's also a lot of um, little sort of accessory lines around the eyes for a lot of the characters, so I tried to follow that as long as, as well. And uh, the line art tends to look a little choppy or shaky sometimes on the hair for some reason, so I tried to keep that in my style of this character. Um, so yeah, it's I'm using different inking tools for a couple of these. For this one, I believe I was still using the inking thick and thin though. I tried to put a little bit more detail into her outfit for this one because the outfits tend to be pretty detailed for Danganronpa. And I also realized that using the pure colors I was using um, is a little bit off from Danganronpa. They seem to make th certain colors more pastel, so I think I do dull down the red eyes a little bit because they just look, they're popping too much for Danganronpa's style. Uh, in case you guys didn't know, Danganronpa is a game kind of like, it's kind of like a game version of Battle Royale or The Hunger Games a little bit. Uh, so it's kind of a mystery game and you're trying to like escape basically a building. 
um, and some of your classmates are like traitors and will turn against you. So it's a very spooky game and I really enjoyed it. Uh, Danganronpa, like many anime, has sort of a shine across the whole top of the hair. I put it on top of the lens first, but then I realized it's actually just right above the color layer. And then I did a little ring of color around the eyes, um, just because I saw that in the illustrations, and then I was done. So next is Tim Burton's style. Uh, it seems like Tim Burton's work is usually just like a pencil sketch with a little bit of watercolor blocked in. So instead of doing a sketch, I just went straight in on the inking layer doing some pencil work. It's actually kind of hard to imitate uh, someone else's like doodles. There's just something so spontaneous about the way that um, his art looks. So I tried to do that as best as I could and not do too much erasing, um, but it was surprisingly difficult actually. <laughs> um, and my little character's looking very creepy, which is good. And yeah, for this one, I'm just using a like a pencil imitator. It's it's like trying to be as close to a pencil in real life as possible. So there's a little bit of a grit on it and it's a little bit grayer. And then I use a watercolor to fill in some of the colors. Uh, I think I even did a little bit too much color on this one because if you really look at a lot of Tim Burton's work, it's very limited palette and it's not very saturated. So if I was to do it again, I think I would pull back the color even more. And then I just do a little watercolor wash around her because I was seeing that a lot in his work. Uh, next I do the gorilla style, which I am super big fan of and I wish I did. Um, I wish I could draw like that. I don't know, the inking is just so pristine and so like beautiful, I can't even stand it. Um, so yeah, that's 2D from the Gorillaz Band and he's adorable. So the main hallmarks of this one I think are the super clean inking and also just the coloring style. They also seem to do a lot of cast light on top of their characters. Like you can see he has sort of a yellow cast light over the entirety of his color scheme, which I tried to replicate later in the drawing. I think I did the liner a little bit too thick. I, I would also probably dial that back just a tiny bit because the line art on 2D is really crisp and really thin. And I tried to stick to sort of a choppy kind of style with her hair. I feel like that looks best in the gorilla style. Drawing her face to be a bit more feminine when the only reference picture I had was 2D was um, a little bit challenging at first, but I think I kind of got it. And yeah, I just kind of tried to fill in all the colors as best as I could. Again, this is one where I think I'm using a bit too much saturation which I know is crazy because I'm like the queen of pastels, but um, with this character, she's got pretty strong saturation um, in her design. So for some of these, I wish I dialed it back. And basically how I got this shading style was I just put in um, shading and then I basically just took an eraser with a that was like fuzzy at the end and just erased a little bit. So it looked like that nice smooth markery kind of shading that you see. And then I just threw some cast light on it, and then I moved on to um, Siren. I, I'm not sure how to pronounce her name. I didn't actually know about her until I asked you guys about whose styles I should try out, and I looked her up, and I really do like her style. It's quite um, beautiful. She seems to use a lot of like blue ballpoint pen, which is really cool, and then she just layers um, other like watercolor and other types of mediums on top of her blue ballpoint pen which is pretty unusual and it gives it a real like sketchbook doodling sort of quality which is really very very cool I think. Her style is a lot different than mine in that she emphasizes the nose and the mouth way more than I usually do. Uh, so that's something I struggled with a little bit when I was trying to mimic her style. I also was struggling a bit with the fact that she uses so many different mediums and it's very clear that it's not digital but I tried to imitate it as best as I could. She does a lot of outfit of the day work, which I think is a really cool sort of thing to do. I, I should start doing that more, I think. Um, that would be kind of fun. And yeah, I tried to find a blue ballpoint pen brush 
in my little brush pack and I know I have one somewhere but I couldn't find it for whatever reason so I just did a micron simulated brush and I, I took the blue color from her actual sketch. Uh, I was layering much darker colors because my, my character has darker skin and hair color than the character of the reference I used but I think I should have dialed those back again as well because it really overpowered the blue line art. Um, it's interesting how changing just a few colors can really change how someone's style looks. Also, I think I messed up the face a little bit, but I'm trying not to be too self-conscious. Uh, I went back in a couple of times because I realized I was doing too opaque of work, so I went in with a little watercolor and tried to do the facial shading with that instead, and I think that turned out a lot better. I also did some nice shines in the hair, and I did them a bit more than are in the reference picture just to lighten up the hair overall. But um, honestly, this is the one I'm least happy with, I think. And yeah, I just did a quick watercolor wash, tried to clean up a few things around the eyes, and then voila. Now we're on to the last one. So this is Sanrio's style. It's super cute, super simple. Um, but in that simplicity, it's really crisp and really sort of idyllic looking. I adore Sanrio's work. In case you didn't know, that's uh, who did Hello Kitty as well. So um, I'm taking their light brown line art uh, color and I'm just lining as carefully as I can because the lines are super consistent and smooth. So I tried to imitate that as best as I could. And I gave her big braids and her little outfit. And I put her on a cloud just like um, this little Twin Stars character because I thought that was super, super cute. And the good news about this style is it's super easy to color. You just fill it in and the line art is so easy to fill in. So that's the end of that. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you <laughs> enjoyed all my various attempts. I did my best and I can't wait to tell you more about um, what this character is gonna be in because it's really exciting for me. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Big thank you to my patrons, including Muffins McGee, Pay Namel, Adrian Delport, Chartype, Den, Brock, Juan Alvarez, blah 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 blah, Adrian Morales, at Live Likes to Draw, and Kate Meekins. Thank you so much for your support.